Under new government plans, transgender pupils could be rejected from taking places at same-sex schools. The guidance would apply to both state and independent schools in England and could even let teachers refuse to call students by their preferred pronouns. Joining me in the studio is Naomi Cunningham, barrister at Outer Temple Chambers and co-founder of Sex Matters. And from Norwich is Felix Byrne, co-founder of Trans Activism UK. So maybe I'll start with you, Felix, and, 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 and ask you about this. So we're talking about same-sex schools, so all girls or all boys, and the possibility that trans children or pupils would not be able to attend. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, well, I'd like to begin just by saying, so my name is Felix, my pronouns are he, they. I just wanted to check before I begin uh, if Naomi could confirm her pronouns for me. I'd say her, I could be wrong, so it'd be great if Naomi could tell me their pronouns. No, I'm not going to tell you my pronouns. Why would you like to know Naomi's pronouns? You might as well ask me mine, which you can ask with pleasure if you want to, do you? Uh, yeah, I would like to actually. Yes, Vanessa, what are your pronouns? Well, I'm she, her. I'm mother of two daughters and grandma to four grandchildren and I'm she, her. But I wonder why you want my guest, Naomi, whom you don't know, to tell you her pronouns before we even start. To show how simple it is. So the conversation, or one of the big conversations, is whether or not preferred pronouns should be allowed in schools or something that should be respected for transgender students. That's as simple as the conversation is. My name is this, my pronouns are this, you ask someone what their pronouns are, that's it. No other issues, it doesn't cause any contention for anyone, that's honestly as complex and as difficult as the subject gets. So from my point of view, as a transgender person who has been through the school system though quite a long time ago, I don't personally understand why such a simple topic is being blown out of proportion and made so that students who would just like to get on with their everyday learning should be made to feel as though this very small part of their identity should make them uncomfortable and feel unsafe and disrespected within a school environment. Well, let's ask Naomi what she thinks of this. So the idea is that, you know, pupils will be, if it's an all-girls school, they'll be she, and if it's an all-boys school, they'll be he, regardless of their feelings or their inclinations or their gender or their identity, I suppose. Yes, I mean, it, it's often said by activists on the other side of this debate um, that this is just a simple courtesy. Um, all you have to do is ask people their pronouns and announce your own and fall in with whatever other people want. Um, it's not as simple as that. If you ask me to declare my program, my, my pronouns, mm -hmm. um, you ask me to express my assent to a belief system that I don't um, subscribe to. Um, and that's quite bullying. So um, I, might, I might need you to explain that and unpick that a little bit. I'm assuming what you're saying is, if I ask you to reveal your pronouns, I'm assuming that you believe that people can change their pronouns or that they may be pronouns that they don't appear to be or weren't born as, but you may not believe that to be true, is that right? Yes, and more than that, you're assuming and you're asking me to assent to the proposition that it's for me to say what pronouns other people use of me. Um, and my position is that the appropriate pronouns to use of you and me are completely obvious, um, but, in, but, but if they were not, it's not for you or me to dictate that. It's for other people. Pronouns are used by other people to, 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 to refer to me and they must use the pronouns that they think appropriate. Well, let's ask Felix about that. Felix, <clears throat> uh, at some points in your life, I'm assuming that people were using pronouns to describe you and about you that you didn't feel comfortable with or didn't think expressed your identity. And I wonder how that feels if people are describing you as she when you're really he as far as you're concerned. Correct, yeah. I've had different pronouns used for me throughout my life, depending on my stage and transition. I've also had people who weren't sure what pronouns to use for me. And I find that it can be both a difficult situation for all parties involved if they're not sure which to use. It's one of those very simple things. It's always safer to just not assume and just not ask. Naomi is, of course, absolutely uh, in, entitled to their opinion. I'm going to use they, them, because I'm not sure of Naomi's pronouns. Um, absolutely entitled to that, and that's absolutely fine. Everyone should be entitled to their personal belief. But from my point of view, it's more of a simple grammatical issue rather than an ideological one. So to me, it makes sense in a school environment to make sure that all of your students feel happy and comfortable with the way that you're referring to them, whether that's within earshot or not. 
I, I, it's, it seems very overcomplicated to me to make sure just that a simple thing of every one of your students feels safe and comfortable. If you take away part of their identity and say that for some kind of ideological belief system that you cannot refer to them by a simple pronoun, what you're saying is, I don't see you as an individual human being, so I'm going to overlook anything that makes you comfortable. And that feels quite bullying and dangerous to me. I just don't know, Naomi, about this idea of uh, referring to people as individual human beings when they're in a school setting, where in general what you're doing is addressing pupils collectively and saying, right, come on, children or pupils or year six or girls or boys or whatever you're saying. Um, well, I can see that there will, there will be certain circumstances, there will quite often be circumstances where a teacher has to refer to a pupil um, in the third person, a particular pupil in the third person, and will need a, a singular pronoun. Mm -hmm. um, Felix just said um, everyone is entitled to their own belief, um, and I very much agree with that. That's quite an important thing. Um, if you require all the children in a school to, and all the teachers in a school to use the pronouns the counterfactual, the non-reality-based pronouns of a particular child who is a girl but says she's a boy, or who is a boy but says he's a girl, mm -hmm. um, then those other children's and those teachers' rights are engaged as well. It's not just a matter of being kind to one individual and respecting that individual's rights. It's also a matter of respecting the rights of all the other children and adults in the school to their own belief, which Felix has just said that Felix respects, um, and, and to their freedom of expression. So, so it's let, not let just me ask Felix how he feels about what Nemi has just said, which is non-factual. So, so Nemi has just said, so a girl who is a girl but says she's a boy, or a boy who is a boy but says he's a girl. Now, I wonder whether that's the way you see that or whether you see that very differently and you think people think that's a girl, this person was born biologically a girl, but is quite clearly in his or their own mind a boy, and therefore there's nothing non-factual about it. Maybe you don't agree with what Nem has just said. Yeah, unfortunately, that is something where we will simply not agree to see eye to eye. Um, I know the Sex Matters tweeted a bit earlier today with something uh, along those lines that suggests that essentially what you're doing by using these pronouns is suggesting that one gender cannot be the other. Whereas from my point of view, that's an irrelevant matter because with students, it, it, it truly doesn't matter what their sex is. That's, that's something that's only important within a sex specific environment, which single sex schools, I mean, personally, I don't see the need for single sex schools. I think they're quite antiquated. But if you have them, you need to be accommodating for any student that you allow into that school. And I don't believe that gender is this immutable thing where if you are one sex, that's it. And I think that if you do believe that, 100% fine, you're entitled to that, but you cannot necessarily force that belief onto others. Naomi believes that my using the pronouns that people prefer, that make them comfortable, that make them feel respected, is me forcing that ideology onto others by saying, well, this person uses their pronouns, therefore, by using them, you're agreeing with them. I think that's overcomplicating things. I think that it is respectful and decent to speak to people how they wish to be spoken to. It does not mean that you are somehow violating your own personal beliefs. I, I think that's a little bit silly, personally. Do you respond? Um, it's actually rather more serious than just, I mean, it's, as I've said, the um, rights to freedom of expression and freedom of belief of the other children and adults in the school are engaged. But it's actually even more serious than that, to my mind. If children um, and adults in a school are required to go along with a change of pronouns so that they refer to a girl as, as he and a, or a boy as she, um, that is an aspect of what is often referred to as social transition. And as Hilary Cass has said in her interim report um, into the treatment of gender distress in young people, um, that's a very serious intervention in itself. It's something that's capable of entrenching um, gender distress in a young person and making it much harder for them to go back if they've gone through a phase of, of thinking that they are the opposite sex. Um, it, 
if they've required everybody around them to pretend that they are the op opposite sex and everyone around them has indulged that, um, it's going to make it much more difficult for them to row back. OK, I'm going to give Felix the final <coughs> word on this because Felix has lived this and so, you know, really does have experience of how it feels. Um, do you think that that is true, that if you identify, if you're a girl, born a girl, biologically a girl, you identify as a boy, as a child, so you're still of school age, and everybody starts to call you he and him, and then you have second thoughts and think, gosh, I, I did feel like that, but I was 11 and now I'm 15, actually I feel a bit different. And I know it's not at all the same, but I remember at school there were various people at my school who were most definitely gay at school. It was kind of all the rage at the time, actually. And then we all got to university and suddenly they weren't. And, you know, so they had rethought whatever their sexual inclinations were. Actually, a few were the other way around as well. They were very straight at school and suddenly got gay at university. You know, people can <laughs> change. Things do fluctuate and are fluid. Would you agree that if you have been called by different pronouns because you ask people to, and then you want to, as, as, as it's just been described, as anybody describes it, row back on that choice, it makes it more difficult? Or do you think you just simply say, you know, I thought I was this, but now I think I'm this, everybody's changed and it's not that much of a big deal? I, I can tell you firsthand that that's categorically not correct. So I use the pronouns he, they, because I did for a very long time identify it as binary trans masculine. So I used only he, him pronouns. I came out as trans when I was 13. That was 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. I no longer identify that way. I now identify as non-binary. Changing those has not been difficult for me. I've had moments in my life where I thought perhaps I want to change entirely. And I've dabbled with it and I've experimented with it. And it's been fine and it has not harmed me deeply. And I fully support people who do get to the stage where they wish to go back. 